Each year, 30 of the best draft prospects are selected to join an elite group called the AFL Academy. To fast track their development, they have access to some of the best coaches and facilities. Plus they get the chance to train with an AFL club for a week. They also meet a couple of times a year for camps and to coincide with Gather Round, the AFL Academy jetted off for a four day trip to Adelaide. They scheduled a match against Port Adelaide's SANFL side in front of hundreds of recruiters and we were lucky enough to go behind the scenes and capture their journey. Hi, I'm Jed Walter from the AFL Academy. Come take a look behind the scenes at our trip in Adelaide at Gather Round. So who are these guys? Well, Harley Reid is the big name. He's one of the most touted prospects we've seen in years with the ability to dominate in any position. His trademark fend off and flair has seen him likened to Dustin Martin. Then there's Ashton Moyer. He jumps high, can play forward or back and famously doesn't have a preferred foot. He kicks set shots from 50 metres out and switches foot depending on what part of the ground he's having a shot from. Nick Watson is a genuine wizard. He's a crafty small forward who plays way above his height and has recently shown his skill off halfback. Jed Walter is a strong key forward tied to the Gold Coast Suns Academy. He's got plenty of confidence and he's one of the jokers in the group. Dan Curtin is the best key defender in the crop and he controls the game in the air and on the ground. Colton Tholstrup is one of the most beloved characters in the group. He's a tough half forward with a massive kick and plenty of personality. Zane Dersma is a beast in the air and he loves taking pack marks. He's the younger brother of Port Adelaide duo Xavier and Yasmin. Oh, and this is Tarkin Lockyer. You might remember him from his career at Collingwood, right? He's the head coach of the academy and he's going to help guide us through this trip. So one of the one of the philosophies of the academy is to not duplicate what they get in all of their other programs, but actually to try and give them a different experience. So as a part of the AFL Academy, we'll come together for high performance training camps. We'll have games like, like this one, and they'll also get to integrate into AFL environments uh, quite often. And one of the initiatives that we have is they go and train with an AFL club. They get an experience to go and spend a week as an AFL player. So the, the learning and the, the experience that they gain through those opportunities is invaluable. What you need to bring is you need to compete. And the competition bit, when I say that, I reckon straight away we go to game day, don't we? We go to a ball between myself and George, and we're going to fight to win, to win possession. The other part of compete is against yourself. Providing, giving yourself the best opportunity to be successful. Competing against yourself to prepare as best you can. Competing against yourself to bring the best mindset that you can. Now, 30 guys in the room. 30 guys in the room. Hands up who, who generally plays midfield. Who normally plays mid. Who also happens to play forward, generally. Put your hand up if you play forward to the ball. Like, most of the room, isn't it? Yeah? So you do the math on that one. Can't all, we can't all be starting inside the centre square, although we'd all like to. Yeah, so Thursday, this is the first day that we've come into camp. Uh, so the players have flown in from, from all across the country. Um, this is the first time that we'll be together for, for a few months. So I'm sure there's a, a few nerves. Um, I'm sure the players are really eager to connect again with each other. Um, but what we're going to do is that we're going to hit the ground running. So straight away, once we get settled, we're going to jump into a main training session, um, really to, to sort of flush out, flush out they've been sitting down on planes and, and travelling. Um, but really to, to get going in a footy sense. So we've got some pretty important stuff to get done uh, in a training sense and some important learnings to take away from this session. Um, but they'll have, a, they'll have a reasonable sort of hit out this afternoon before we really commence our preparations for the game. Tarkin plans training down to the minute and everything has a purpose. It's not just roughly five minutes of handballing or 10 minutes of kicking. It's 12 minutes of aerial battles with assistant coach Anthony Rocker providing advice. It's four minutes of five players versus two in a handball game. Remember these drills because the lessons learned from them were evident on game day. Yeah, so Friday is captain's run day. Uh, so the day before the game, we'll come together. Uh, we're actually gonna spend the morning at the Adelaide Footy Club. So really, really grateful and 
what an opportunity to go into an AFL environment and, and spend some time in, in there. Really, the, the training session will be a, a fairly low-key sort of event. Uh, what we'll also have is the opportunity to hear from a few special guests in at, the, at the Adelaide Footy Club in staff and players. And after training, we're actually also going to have, have lunch with the AFL recruiting staff. So uh, it should be a, a pretty fun day. And largely for, for the players, it's about getting their, their bodies and their minds right to prepare for the next day. <laughs> How'd you stop that? <laughs> so that was Nate Caddy. As you can see, he can do some pretty freakish things around the goals, and he's great overhead too. His uncle is Josh Caddy. This is Colby McKercher. He's a tough midfielder from Tassie with a bit of burst to his game. Jack Callanan is another Tasmanian with a great goal sense. He's the son of former Crow Ian. And this is Riley Sanders. He's an inside midfielder whose stocks are rising up this year. Sanders plays for the Sandringham Dragons, but he's also a Tasmanian. We want to own the corridor and we're going to keep our layers. So we're going to have forwards, mids, backs. We want to keep, keep our shape, keep our layers, but we want to own the middle of the ground all the time. So I said yesterday that we want to play in an offence a really attacking, exciting brand of football. In order to do that, we've got to put our numbers there. So what I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the licence to take the game on. You're all great decision makers. You've got the freedom in the game to play exciting footy and showcase your strengths. No different than winning a car license. And Tarkin has the personnel to own the corridor. This is Caden Cleary, a tough ball winner from the Sydney Swans Academy. And his partner in crime is Lockie Carbor. He can win plenty of contested footy himself. This guy is Jake Rogers, a tackling beast from the Gold Coast Academy. Their job is to win the clearances and get it to the guys on the outside to set up their game. But it's up to the rucks to get them the ball first. And this year's crop is pretty stacked. Ethan Reed is from the Gold Coast Academy and a freak runner. Will Green plays for the Northern Knights and he's a beautiful kick for a big guy. And Mitch Edwards? Yeah, why don't you just have a look at this one? Hollands, big pack mark. Edwards raising up, taking a strong contested grab. Adelaide trio Riley Philthorpe, Isaac Rankin and Andrew McPherson join the crew a day after their game to pass on some wisdom. Probably have a bit more fun, enjoy it a bit more. I was probably pretty serious and took it pretty serious. Um, and yeah, probably didn't enjoy it as much as I could have. I was probably the other way, I probably had too much fun. Coaches and you know, AFL coaches can just pick their brains and stuff and um, soak it all up and enjoy it at the same time. So just find that balance. Yeah, I just say soak it up. It's a pretty unique experience that you guys get. Um, and it sets you up really well for hopefully getting drafted and being in an AFL system next year. So. Soak it up, learn as much as you can and, and really enjoy yourself. You said so much to like about him at such a young stage. He didn't panic there. Sends it to Hart Each of the guys in the group should be able to find a link to what these Crows have done to make it to the next level. Phil Thorpe bases his game as an athletic key forward by getting up the ground and also being really useful at ground level. Pass over the top, Reed pirouettes his way out of trouble. Archer Reed can certainly Very relate to that skill set and body type. Then there's Andrew McPherson, a halfback who got to where he is while being praised for his professionalism. His toughness and accountability are traits that he shares with the likes of Conor O'Sullivan and Riley Hardiman, while Will Patton and Archie Roberts can look at his offensive tools as something they share. And then there's the human highlight reel, Isaac Rankin. Jack Delian can study how he times his leaps. Orlando Turner can watch how Rankin makes the most of every half chance. And Will Lorenz, Cooper Simpson and Kay McAuliffe can copy some of Rankin's incredible moves at forward half stoppages. So today's game day, uh, what this will look like is probably a little bit different to what most of the players are used to. So given that they're school age or play under 18s football in a general sense, they normally play in the morning. Now we don't, we don't start the game until four o'clock this afternoon, so there's going to be a fair bit of downtime today. But We'll go, for a, we'll go for a walk, do a bit of mobility, uh, have a bit of a stretch and also play a couple of fun little games this morning before really giving the players just free time to 
do what they need to do to get themselves right to go. I think the bus leaves, I think we're leaving here at about 1.30 this afternoon, so uh, there's a little bit of time, but um, I'm sure we'll be right to go. It's just before 1pm, and the guys are deep into a few rounds of Uno. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's good. That's Garbage. Good go on. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> no, I'm No, this is atrocious. Mm. Actually, stop cheating. Actually, you're up there. Actually, it's almost eight. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Biggest cheater, Uno. Coop Simpson looks at the With a bit of time to kill, the guys were pretty happy to break down their highlights of the trip so far and even gave their brown low votes for people they've enjoyed hanging out with the most on the trip. Three, three votes uh, will be Jack down. He's been good fun on the trip. Uh, two votes for Jack Carl. He's been uh, good to hang out with. And uh, one vote for George Stevens, the skipper. And your favourite thing so far about the trip? Uh, training has been unreal. Like, just the level and uh, yeah, the standard of training. Uh, all the boys have got a lot of talent. So it's just yeah, good to have a hit out with them. Three votes I'll give to Nick. Nick Watson, two votes I'll give to uh, Harley and one vote I'll give to uh, Nate Caddy. And uh, what have you enjoyed most about the trip so far? Um, sort of lead up to the game, it's been pretty intense and um, nah, super keen to play. I've uh, got to go to George, um, Riley and um, yeah, probably Colton. Favourite thing so far about the trip? Uh, definitely the training's just been really good, really good to get around the boys. Yeah, yeah. it's been awesome. Alright, 3, 2, 1, brown low votes. Who have you enjoyed hanging out most with on the trip? Uh, 3, Dan, 2, Colton and 1, Green. And what have you enjoyed most about the trip so far? Uh, training's been good. Um, I've loved it here with all the boys and stuff like that. Been hanging around them, get to hang around them in a casual environment. So yeah, I've loved that. 3, 2, 1, best on so far for the trip? Uh, I think Sando, uh, Riley Sanders, Harley Reid and probably Ashton Weller. And your tip for best on today? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, I'd go three. I'd give it to Dan Curtin. Yeah. Um, two. I'd go um, Harley Reid, and then one. I'd go Zane Derns. Um, okay. Just hanging with the boys again after our last camp. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Hang out with some of the boys from Chrissy. So yeah, it's been good. Nice. And uh, rate the DJ. Obviously, you got your own headphones on instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got their different music, but yeah, the boys are playing some good music off the bat. So. Um, so three would have to go to Big George Stevens. Two to Will Patton. And one go to Cooper Simpson. Um, reconnecting with the boys from last camp, like continuing on, like some connections are made there and seeing how they've been going at the start of their seasons. Um, probably Jack Rogers three, Jenny Walker two, Caden one. Yep. For uh, George Stevens, yeah, it was great. Uh, nice captain, well deserved. Um, by the way, he trained really well on the Thursday and uh, um, big Colby you know, <laughs> I just, you know, trained with him, you know, just a professional, professional environment and hopefully the game today, so yeah. After about an hour, the bus arrived at Mount Barker and finally we got to the pre-match warm-ups on a soccer pitch just across from the main oval. For a lot of these guys, it was about touch work and the crossbar challenge was a massive hit. For others, it was a bit of muscle activation. For Jed Walter, it was all about the post-game meal. <laughs> then there was one last final team chat where the importance of owning the centre was again discussed before it was finally go time. There's only three players left that we haven't introduced, but that's because these guys really embody the lessons learned on the trip. This is George Stevens, the captain, and it cannot be overstated how much the players respect his leadership. I promise you, just for 10 minutes, I'll stop knocking. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. 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 Once they stop knocking, once they stop knocking, our house turns into a bit of a playground. We have a bit of fun out here. Yeah. Yeah. Back inside 50, will Georgiades go up? He does! He takes a monster! The toughest part for the academy team was defending Port Adelaide's gun forwards. Mitch Georgiades is a proven talent at AFL level, and it was up to George Stevens to stop him. Georgiades got on top early, 
but you had to respect Stevens's positioning and discipline. And as the game went on, Stevens fought his way back. Punched away from him by Stevens. Remember those handball drills we saw earlier, where the players were coached to drive their legs as soon as they had a chance? Well, here's Nathan Falactides doing just that. Hand pass out to Warfilatidis has been. Nick Watson ran with that manoeuvre too. Got some body on body. Watto was one of the standout performers on the day. He started up forward and got better as the game went on. The rain poured down and somehow he became even more clean. Watson was moved to half-back where he repelled opposition four A's and even hit the scoreboard too. Tuck and Lockyer spoke about why this game wasn't just about the scoreline, but instead about showcasing his strengths. And Darcy Wilson did just that with his evasiveness and dare. He was definitely a player to boost his stocks. Wilson getting around them out on the mark and sent it towards half forward. That is a very good grab. Harley Reid did as Harley Reid does. He fended players off for fun. He dominated in the midfield. He went forward, kicked a goal, and even went back for a little bit too. There were heaps of players who deserved praise. Riley Hardiman and Archie Roberts looked comfortable creating on the run. Defenders Will Patton and Nathan Flacktides were really impressive with the ball in hand. Nate Caddy, Jack Callanan, Zane Dersma and Jed Walter were all able to hit the scoreboard too. Jack DeLeon tried to fly, but the moment of the day belonged to Kane McAuliffe for this awesome goal. My apologies, in fact it was McAuliffe. And I think he's kicked a goal on the left foot snap. He has Kane McAuliffe. But best on for the academy had to be Jake Rogers. His tackling was ferocious, but it was his pinpoint kicking that made a massive difference in slippery conditions. Ultimately, Port Adelaide got the win by 13 points, but it was an impressive showing from the academy guys. Uh, so today's Sunday, uh, the day after the day after the game. Um, so for the for the players, today's all about rest and recovery. So we've given them a little bit of a sleep in this morning before heading down to the beach and going for a walk and, and getting in the water, which I'm sure they would have enjoyed. Um, then following, following that, we're about to head into a, a team review where we'll show some, um, some video sort of evidence of what we set out to do and, and what the performance looked like. Yeah, so um, we played yesterday at Mount Barker. Um, wasn't ideal conditions, a bit slippery and wet, but um, no, it was a good experience. Um, yeah, I loved it and I'm sure the boys did as well, but against faster, bigger bodies and um, yeah, it was a good game and I thought we fought hard all day, but yeah, it was a good game. Yeah. Which of your teammates did you think had a really great game? Um, I thought Jackie Rogers played pretty well through the mid, he was slick all day. What um, didn't end up being last uh, night? Lasagna, chips and um, chicken, so it was, it was good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. <laughs> How do you sort of rate your own game? Were you pretty happy with how you went? Yeah, I was, I was overly happy with my game. Um, I thought I showed some of my strengths. Um, I think I showed some of my work-ons as well and my ability to get out of stoppages um, and break through some, some lines with my speed and stuff. So, yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty happy, yeah. I think you had a pre-game nap on the bus. Did it help out a little bit before the game and just chill you out? I think it did, yeah. I was pretty nervous before the game, so having that little nap, <laughs> I think, <laughs> got me ready, yeah. <laughs> Let's add up that Brownlow tally, shall we? But before that, we've got one last round of votes. Um, probably say Harley three, um, Watto two, and probably Ethan Reed one. Okay. Three, two, one for the coaching staff. There's only three coaches, so that, that becomes a little bit awkward. Um, Tanya Hetherington's been pretty spot on, so she'll get, she'll get the three votes. She's been terrific. Rhett's a wealth of knowledge and got a really really good aspect on the on the game and a good feel for for what's happening and. I've spent way too much time with Anthony Rocker, so he probably gets the one, unfortunately. Sorry, Pebs. Hey guys, it's Jake Rogers here. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out more draft content right here.